tonight. New details on the Apple Watch, Netflix is afraid of popcorn, and why you can now unglue your eyeballs from your Twitter feed. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 259 for Thursday, January 22nd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. Microsoft is still dominating the news today with countless reports about the HoloLens and pundits arguing online about whether this makes Microsoft cool again. Today's new news from Redmond is that Office 2016 is scheduled to come out later this year and tickets to the Microsoft Build Conference went on sale today. If you didn't already get your tickets, too bad because they sold out in an hour. That's compared to the 24 hours it took people to snatch up tickets to the same conference last year. The conference will be held in San Francisco in April, and if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, you can put yourself on the wait list so you too can pay $2,095 to attend. Now, since rumors of the Apple Watch first started, we've heard concerns about battery life. According to sources who talked with 9to5Mac's Mark Gurman, the Apple Watch used a stripped-down version of iOS called Ski Hill, an Apple S1 chip, and a Retina-class screen. Apple engineers are estimating that on a full charge, the watch would last 19 hours. This is taking into consideration both active and passive use. Now, this breaks down to 2.5 to 4 hours of active use, meaning with the screen on and applications running. Of course, this would vary depending on the user and the types of apps, with games typically pulling more battery. The watch's fitness tracking software is targeted at nearly 4 hours of straight use. I don't know about you, but I hardly ever exercise for more than four hours at a time. These sources also report that Apple has an estimated 3,000 test units out in the real world, testing everything from battery life to durability. 9to5Mac reported earlier this month that the Apple Watch will ship at the end of March. My birthday is March 15th, but I will wait. Twitter just officially launched its While You Were Away feature to iOS users. Android and the web version will come soon. You might remember Twitter has been experimenting with this feature since last fall. Here's how it works. While you're taking a break from Twitter, it picks what it considers the best tweets and puts them at the top of your feed. Now, according to Twitter, a lot can happen while you're on the go. This goes against purists who like the chronological aspect of Twitter and don't want to see the company mucking with the service. But you know, change does happen. And speaking of Twitter, today the company set out screen notes to some of its more high-profile users, encouraging them to post photos directly on Twitter instead of using Instagram. This is according to a screenshot obtained by Mashable. Twitter suggested doing this would increase engagement. It was a little over two years ago that Instagram disabled displaying images and tweets, and around the same time, Twitter introduced photo filters. The battle continues. Now, Netflix says, says they'll begin to offer as many as 20 original scripted series per year, and they plan to expand globally over the next two years. And in a letter to shareholders this week, Netflix reported that its biggest threat is not HBO or Amazon or Hulu. Their biggest threat might be a site called Popcorn Time. Mark Million, tech editor at Bloomberg Business, covered this story. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks, Megan. Now, you wrote an article in Business Week called This is the Chart That's Freaking Netflix Out. What can you tell us about yes. this chart? Uh, yeah, at, as you can see, um, you know, there's it's basically a Google Trends chart, uh, charts showing um, comparing search terms in the Netherlands um, over the last year or so, um, and you can see from the graphic there that within the last six months, searches for this app Popcorn Time have exploded and are basically neck and neck with Netflix among the Dutch. Um, so what, what so, is Popcorn Time? Yeah, so Popcorn Time um, for the for the non-pirates who are listening um, has <laughs> become basically... <laughs> uh, I hadn't... Uh, well, I had heard of it actually, but I've, I've never used it personally mm -hmm. um, in case the FBI is listening to this <laughs> <Right>. broadcast. Um, <laughs> Popcorn Time is is really blown up uh, to become one of the most popular um, piracy video services out there. Um, it's it it's a really sleek interface. It looks a lot like Netflix. You can get it on 
just about any computer or even on a jailbroken iPhone or an Android. Um, and it it's basically Netflix, but with just about everything. So it uh, it lets you kind of stream torrents um, so you can easily look at cover art and then pull up, you know, um, Gravity or uh, Interstellar or whatever movie is readily available on torrent sites. Well, that's the interesting thing. I went to the site just to check it out for this story, and it, it does look really sleek. I mean, it's hard. Usually you're used to, you know, pop-up ads in a site that if it's illegal, you can tell it's illegal. But someone who's just like, oh, I, you know, their brother told them about popcorn time, you know, Netflix should be worried, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is really well designed. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it kind of proves that as, you know, when you compare this to like Napster or Kazaa or even, even the Pirate Bay, Popcorn Time is just miles. It just, it feels like you're using, um, you know, a really nice polished commercial service, um, but all of it is completely illegal. Right. So why are why are they writing why are they telling their investors about this? Well, I've I you know, they they described it as a sobering chart and that was basically the extent of what Netflix said about it in the shareholder letter, but uh, obviously the reason they're telling shareholders about this is because they're concerned that, you know, uh, like you said their main competition won't necessarily be HBO or Amazon it will be, you know, more consumers migrating to or migrating back to piracy as it gets better. Um, as I mentioned in the article, this was um, kind of an argument Steve Jobs had used when he was trying to sell the record labels on iTunes um, to sell their songs for 99 cents is you need to make it painless and you need to make it better than piracy. And so when you compared to using uh, Kazaa at the time um, that iTunes came out, it was, you know, a lot of junk files you would find on there, hard, hard to get the songs that you wanted. Then iTunes came along, you easy search box, you type in and you get your song, 99 cents, and you're instantly listening to it on your iPod. Um, and so Netflix needs to sort of make that same play and, and they'll need the Hollywood on board to kind of give them more content so they're not so behind on uh, on new movies and new shows um, if they're, you know, if the competition is just, you know, illegal downloads. Okay, so I see what they're saying. So that it's not, I can't get the newest movies on Netflix and I want them. So if I'm sort of leaning toward law breaking, I'm going to go to this site. So what they're arguing is that they need newer, better movies. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's been their argument for a long time. I mean, they, they basically want to impress upon the movie studios and the content companies and all these folks that they have to negotiate very expensive agreements, um, with that account for the vast majority of their, uh, you know, their revenue that they want, you know, cheaper access to this content. They want access to newer content, like the, the, the movies that you can only find on Redbox when they first come out. Um, because they're saying if you don't create a really good service that consumers want, want to pay for and use, then they'll just go and get it for free on Popcorn Time or whatever else pops up. I mean, it's it often, you know, the Pirate Bay was just shut down last month mega upload was uh was shut down you know the year before that um and so as these as authorities go and 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 knock out the biggest player at any given time another several ones pop up and they're even better than the last few um and so this is kind of the argument netflix has been trying to make right well thanks for bringing this to light for us mark what are you working on next what's your next big story uh, well, our next big thing, uh, we're launching a new uh, website, um, bloombergbusiness.com. Uh, it's coming very soon, so um, keep an eye out for that. It's uh, kind of a marriage between Business Week magazine and bloomberg.com on the internet. Uh, it should be, should be very well-designed and awesome and a good place to get your business news. Well, cool. Thank you so much, Mark. Thanks. That was Mark Million from Bloomberg, and you can check up with him on uh, Bloomberg or his Twitter handle, which is at Mark Million. And coming up, BlackBerry desperately wants you to make apps for them, and the iTunes App Store is poised to take on Hollywood. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Lynda.com. 
Lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, and business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop. What's your plan for 2015? Are you looking to market yourself or your business? I recommend Lynda.com courses like blogging for your business, SEO fundamentals, and the top 10 social media management tools. Whether you have 15 minutes or 15 hours, each course is structured so you can learn at your own pace from start to finish. And of course, all lynda.com courses are taught by experts who are accomplished professionals at the top of their field. Do something good for yourself in 2015 and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash TN2. You'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on your iOS and Android devices, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's lynda.com slash TN2 to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new in 2015. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The Ford Motor Company announced today it will open a research and innovation center in Silicon Valley. The pur purpose of the site will be to invent a range of technologies for Ford cars, including the technology behind self-driving cars. Ford expects to employ 125 researchers and engineers there by the end of this year. They also plan to expand the company's work on car automation with Silicon Valley's Stanford University and on speech recognition with the Silicon Valley campus of Carnegie Mellon University. Now, most BlackBerry and Windows phone users are probably already used to having a limited selection of apps for than their iOS and Android friends and family. Well, BlackBerry CEO John Chen thinks this is so discriminatory that he wants legislators to widen the definition of net neutrality to include application neutrality. In other words, if a company makes an app for iOS or Android, they must also make a version for BlackBerry and all other operating systems. John Chen even sent a letter to several members of Congress stating application content providers must be prohibited from discriminating based on customers' mobile operating systems. While all of this would benefit BlackBerry, of course, it would most likely put many smaller developers out of business. Now, we all know that a lot of money is being made in the iTunes App Store, but a blog post by Horace Deju recently put, put it into perspective. The App Store, he points out, is bigger than Hollywood, bigger than digital music, TV shows, and movies combined. Total revenues paid to iOS app developers last year exceeded all movie theater box office revenues in the United States. Now, some app developers earn more than some Hollywood stars. Deju also points out that the App Store is growing rapidly. Billings for iOS apps increased by 50% in 2014, something like 40% of the app sales revenues ever earned since the App Store opened last year were made last year. And finally, last week we told you that Obama chose three YouTube celebrities to interview him. That interview happened today at 5 p.m. Eastern, and it's available to watch at whitehouse.gov. You see here, this was the end of the interview where they took the obligatory selfie. Vlog brother Hank Green went first, followed by my new favorite person in the whole world, Glozelle, with her green lipstick. I'm going to start trying that. Rounding off the, with the third interview was hair and makeup tipper Bethany Moda, who asked the really hard-hitting questions like what superpower Obama would choose. <clears throat> should be noted he chose flying and made sure to point out that he would not choose the superpower of invisibility. Why would he? He's got the NSA for that. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.